everybody, welcome to, uh, whoops. Hello, everybody! <laughs> Hit the wrong button. Welcome to another episode of Ten Forward Weekly. Uh, my name is Mike Fadem. I am your senior community manager. Uh, and I am joined uh, this week by the amazing, talented, and fascinating Jesse Heinig. Say hello, Jesse. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you doing today? I'm uh, doing pretty good over on the side there. Um, I'm feeling the strength of the designer's elbow. <laughs> yeah, did anybody, anybody in chat watch WrestleMania last night? Because it was, or two nights ago, because it was great. That was unexpected. I did not think they would actually go there. <laughs> yeah, I'm very pleased. <laughs> <sighs> oh, and the background was off. Okay, cool. Uh, well, Jesse, we are here today to uh, to show off a new ship. Um, and, yes. uh, uh, just before we get started, I, I know everybody's, uh, 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 excited to guess what new Kelvin timeline ship is, but I've seen a couple questions about how this ship will be available. So I will mention this first, uh, this is going to be available, uh, starting on Thursday in, uh, a, a sp infinity promotion pack. So if you get an infinity, uh, R and D pack or an infinity duty officer pack, uh, that'll get you a chance to get this ship, uh, commence wailing and gnashing of teeth. I'm waiting for it. Waiting for it? Okay, cool. Ah. <laughs> 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 A little bit of Conan. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Um, yeah, as Commodore Terry Met said, that means it could be also could be your uh, uh, your event campaign ship next year. So that is the good news. Um, and it's all good news. True. Um I don't know. I feel like we should make them wait a little bit longer, especially from because of the number of people that have yelled Kelvin o Oberth uh, at me. Uh, mm, I don't even know. They're trolling. There it is. They are. Yeah, there is no Kelvin Oberth. All right. Well, there will never be a Kelvin Oberth. Let's make them wait. Let's make them wait. <laughs> so wait. We, we've got first contact day coming up. Obviously, it's a little after actual first contact day this year. We're launching that on the 11th, so a couple of days. So we could talk about that for a little while. We could, actually. I didn't actually go to... Um, as I, so what happened was uh, I I thought I was doing the stream with zero guests. Uh, and then about five seconds ago, Jesse said, messaged me and said, Hey, I'm ready to do the stream. And I said, well, what? Because <laughs> I had fun. He couldn't make it. Uh, so we scrambled, <laughs> we scrambled to get him on, which is why we started a little late. Um, but also... Uh, it means uh, I didn't actually prep to show you guys the uh, photon launcher on stream, um, but I can try and do that. Uh, Jesse, you want to talk a little bit about how this this lovely new Absolutely. weapon came to you out? Okay, so um, some of you fans will recall that a little while back we managed to sneak in a weapon that originally showed up in the video game Star Trek Elite Force. Uh, the iMod, the Infinity Modulator anti-Borg rifle. And uh, that was a big hit. And uh, as a result, we decided, okay, um, let's uh, keep that gravy train going. What's another really memorable weapon from Elite Force? And of course, the Photon Burst, which is Elite Force's version of a rocket launcher. Basically, a very large rifle that fires micronized photon torpedoes. And uh, so he said, can we get that into the game? And of course, the answer was yes. And that is what we're going to be bringing to you for first contact day this year. The yeah. Photon Burst, um, it is classed as a rifle. And uh, so it's affected by various skills and things that affect rifles. Uh, but it's a little bit unusual as far as rifles go um, because it has to fire micronized photon torpedoes. So uh, there's a limit to how many of those that it can have in its magazine at one time. So it, it has uh, ammunition. It will carry six charges, uh, after which it starts using an internal replicator to generate additional charges. You know, just like Voyager never ran out of photon torpedoes. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, the charger, every 15 seconds, will generate another charge through the replicator. So the expected gameplay is that you will come into a fight and you will open with this thing just raining fire and mayhem down upon your enemies until it runs out of charges and then you swap to your alternate weapon and use that to clean up on your opponents if you're in an extended boss fight you might end up switching uh might wind up switching back to the photon burst again after it recharges a few more of those torpedoes 
Uh, it does detonate and hit an area around the target that you hit, so it will damage and knock opponents that are close to your main target. Uh, enemies that are defeated by it are disintegrated, just like they were in Elite Force. Um, and you can even knock yourself back with it. If your target is very close to you, the force of the knockback can knock you down. So be cautious about your ranging. You won't blow yourself up, but you will knock yourself to the ground. Um, the secondary fire mode is a homing torpedo. And when you fire that, instead of it launching toward your primary target, it launches to whichever foe is closest to you. So if you are in a tight spot with a lot of enemies and you use the secondary fire, uh, it might fire off to the side or even around behind you and hit someone that you didn't see. <laughs> I am now demonstrating on screen uh, the dis fully destructive power of this weapon. Uh, but as Jesse mentioned, uh, now I'm out of ammo. I can't fire anything, so I have to switch to my backup weapon, which is this uh, piezoelectric thingy mobile, uh, and blow uh, these guys up that way while we're waiting for it Finish to Finish them off. Yeah. Uh, I had a question of whether it will uh, blow our team back or affect us. Let's see. Nope, looks like uh, we're immune. <laughs> it should affect you, but not your uh, team members. However, if you have resistance to knock down effects, uh, that resistance does apply. So it is possible for you to avoid being knocked down if you're resistant, and it is a chance to knock down. It's not guaranteed that it'll get you every time. Uh, okay. um, the uh, photon burst comes uh, from the event in a levelless format, so it will level with you up to level 60, and then you can convert it using the upgrade system into a Mark 12 weapon and upgrade it from there all the way up to Mark 15. Um, it is uh, pretty brutal. It uh, is. The, uh, the damage output is solid. It is also, in the best possible way, completely silly looking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's take a closer look at this thing. Hold on. Stop turning around. No, stop turning around. <laughs> free cam. Yeah, I'm on free cam, but she's there we go. You Why can is see she her. turning while free cam? That is so weird. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's got a little, uh, little, little heart of a star looking thing in there. Uh, yes, I do have God Mode on. Oh, right, Mystic Tree. I have God Mode on. That's why I'm not... Uh, that would back. explain why you weren't getting knocked. Although I only have Untargetable on, but I guess it can't knock you back if it can't target you. Right. If you're Untargetable, then the power can't target you to knock you. Yeah. You filthy cheater. So, um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the uh, Photon Burst can be given to bridge officers. They will know how to use it. Um, but uh, if you do that, of course, they can run out of charges, and then all they can do is run up and rifle butt people with it. So... Uh, that might not be the best use for it. Um, <laughs> best deployed by the captain. And we really tried, the, the art team went kind of above and beyond to model this to look like exactly the weapon out of Elite Force, but with an idea of, okay, we've got extra years of graphical fidelity yeah. on that game. So what can we do to really make this thing stand out? And uh, I'm hoping that everyone really enjoys this. You'll be able to get it for free from playing the first Contact Day event. And, of course, it is account reclaimable once you've done so. And the contact, the first Contact Day event is super fun to play, so it's not even a chore for you. Right. So it looks like full charges on this thing is eight torpedoes to start with? Six, or six it should be six torpedoes. Okay, cool. And, yes, it does kinetic damage. Um, and it, the entire away team with photon torpedo rifles absolutely made you rev 100%. Uh, especially a Klingon <laughs> squad, because that works perfect for Klingons. We shoot missiles from close range, and then we just start hitting them with the missile launcher. Right. <laughs> um, one of the design goals with this, too, is that we already have the micro torpedo launcher hit module, and we really wanted the photon burst to feel like it's a bit beefier, because it's an actual gun. It's not like an attachment that is you know, a, a wrist rocket or something that you clip onto your uh, tricorder. It's a serious gun firing a full-on photon torpedo. So it hits pretty hard. Yeah. And uh, since it's kinetic damage, of course, very effective against non-mirror Borg and all <laughs> kinds of enemies. Oh, that's true. I should go and I should get this to go and use. I should use this and a sword. That should be my loadout. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mystic Tree 44, this is account reclaimable, so you can reclaim as many of them as you like, so you can get them for your bridge officers. Um, let's see. 
Uh, yeah. Um, having to play pay uh play it repetitively is the chore. Thomas Statton says it's a good thing you have th- at least three different options of things to do for First Contact Day. Then right on First Contact Day, you can play the model rocket game. You can do one night in Bozeman where you're helping Seven of Nine to prevent the Borg from overrunning the Enterprise E crew uh, yeah. as seen in First Contact. Uh, and uh, of course, you can play. Um, uh, oh gosh, there's another piece of content, and it has totally slipped my mind. I guess uh, I don't talk about past synthwave. content either. Synthwave, thank you. Yeah. The uh, the synthetic revolt on Mars. Um, that one is fun just for the music alone. Yeah. Um, folks are saying uh, that it doesn't look super powerful in the gameplay demonstration that I'm giving. I don't know what the deal with that is, but it's probably something to do with the way I've set this character up. Uh, rather than, I'm sure, I'm sure you DPS heads will have it raining death from the skies uh, very quickly. <laughs> Right, so its uh, damage, of course, is going to scale based on its mark, or if it's uh, in its level is formed based on your level. It's That's affected true. by your your rifle weapon skills. So if your character isn't a rifle specialist, uh, it, it might not be the greatest weapon of all time for you. And this is, of course, a um, you know a very narrow path to tread. We want it to feel good and to be memorable, but we don't want to make this best weapon in game. Always use this, nothing else ever, because yep. then. Once we've given that away, there's no other weapon that anyone would ever want to use. So why would we do that? <laughs> All right. Well, with that in mind, this thing is awesome. I'm glad we made them wait a little bit just for our own amusement. Uh, but I think we should probably go show off this ship, especially since some of them saw Let's it in my it. menu. <laughs> Fla- uh, Augie, normally I'd just let things go, but I'd have to let that word go th- go all the time if I say allow. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna not let that word go through all the time. <sighs> mm. uh, free spirit, yeah, it is the weapon from uh, fr- uh, Star Trek uh, from Elite Force. That is, uh, we mentioned it up at the top of the stream, but you probably hadn't gotten here yet. Yeah, straight up out of Elite <laughs> Force. Yeah. All right, so now we are loading into space so we can look at the brand new ship. And I'm very excited. It's the to go off Star here. Trek Extended Universe is just full of so many glorious things that not taking the opportunity to add them in here and there and spice up Star Trek with them would be a real missed opportunity. So I'm very glad that we were able to get this in. And here we go. And here Ain't we go. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, many of you guessed it. This is the uh, Kelvin Enterprise Constitution 2, or Enterprise A, uh, as seen very briefly in the closing credits of Star Trek Beyond. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to get this into the game. Those spinning blades in the nacelles look very, very cool. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, it's this is interesting. So I don't know how much you know about the... Uh, um, the pr- a process behind behind designing this ship, Jesse. But the, uh, um, you know, normally we don't like to put ships in the game unless we've seen something of what they can do in the show mm-hmm. to build powers around and stuff. Um, but this one, you know, we only saw it getting built. So the team I know had to uh, uh, do some suppositions to come up with ideas for how this ship would work. Right. But fortunately, watching Star Trek Beyond itself provided some great inspiration in that regard for the team. Um, the Enterprise in Star Trek Beyond, of course, gets destroyed by the Ultimate Swarm, which is a, a massive swarm of tiny, mostly automated vehicles uh, that pick it apart like locusts devouring something. And uh, it makes sense that the uh, successor to the Enterprise would have some technologies that are designed to make sure that that sort of a crisis doesn't ever happen again. Uh, now, this is, of course, a, a cruiser-type ship, so it is... a uh, got a strong engineering lean with a commander engineering uh, slash intelligence seat uh, and a lieutenant commander pil- tactical oh, pilot seat, okay, yes, I ahead. believe. Yeah, it is, it is um, intel pilot. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were saying it was a command, and I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> right, right. No, no. Commander engineering intel, lieutenant commander tactical pilot. Um, and uh, the uh, console that comes with it, with it, uh, with it then, is the proximity-based anti-opposition emitter, or PBAOE. This is a defensive countermeasure that's made to fight against the ultimate swarm. And when you activate this console, it Pull extends your shield tip slightly. While you're doing that. Hold yeah. on, uh, I just gotta find we'll it. Get there. 
There it is. Okay, uh, that's probably blocked by Jesse's face, if I had to guess. Uh, so I'm going to move Jesse's face. Bop. Okay, there you go. You guys can look at the tool. Yeah, tab. so the, uh, the PVAOE will temporarily extend your shield slightly, and then it, it puts up a rain of phaser fire that bounces in between your emitters and your shields. Um, so that it causes damage to everything inside of that area, just vaporizing mines, targetable torpedoes, and fighters, and doing damage to enemies that are in close proximity. Uh, it also gives you improved maneuverability at the same time and makes you immune to kinetic and phaser damage. So this is great if you are going to get right up next to somebody. Uh, you activate this, you can wipe out large groups of fighters like the Herc, um, you don't have to worry about those pesky Romulan torpedoes when you've got this thing up. Uh, and if you're playing a ship that has high maneuverability because you like using your evasive maneuvers or your piloting abilities to get your otherwise unwieldy cruiser into position, this power while active improves that maneuverability and brings you into great close up knife fighting position yeah. with your opponents. This, is, this console is going to be perfect for me and my inability to not dive into giant groups of combat. <laughs> Right. Um, yeah. Passive bonus to phaser damage just for having the console equipped. So if you're running a phaser build, this is probably a good choice. Um, and the bonus AOE phaser damage is based on your speed. So as you are moving around the map, vaporizing things, your goal is basically just going to be drive through your enemies, uh, leave holes in them. Drive them before you. I, uh, right? um, I Just a quick note on that, um, because I saw this in the notes when I was uh, making the blog earlier. Um, this is based on your actual current flight speed. It's not based on your potential speed. So you can right. turn this on and park next to something and do some damage, but it will really do damage if you're uh, if you're running around and flying at high speed. Right. So for, for all those people who love just zipping around uh, with your builds that are made to have super low cooldown on evasive maneuvers and just flying at incredible speed to get from point to point on the map, this console gives you the ability to just drive through enemies at speed and do damage to them while you're doing it. Um, so potentially a good stack there. Um, yeah. And then this yeah. is the uh, the trait for the console, which is a bonus to all of you uh, uh gravitational anomaly folks out there um right. basically uh when you shoot out a gravitational nexus it gives bonus flight speed and turn rate bonus damage and bonus uh bonus exotic and projectile damage uh to anybody within five kilometers of the nexus any any allies i mean Right. And uh, this is based on the Yorktown Station, which is where this uh, class of ships was built. Uh, as we see in the movie, Yorktown Station studies a bunch of complex gravitational technology. And this is an offshoot of that, the ability to generate artificial gravitational nexus uh, that gives benefits to maneuverability and exotic damage. So this is a great way to amp up your existing uh, science -y ships that do grav well and torpedoes because it will improve the damage on both of those. I'm just gonna just gonna stop in on chat for a second and say, Stu, you doing okay? You having a good day, dude? <laughs> you seem a little <laughs> grumpier than usual. Uh, all right. Um, people are asking constantly, can we kit bash it? I don't know the answer to that question, but I can find out. Uh, yeah, it's a question for our ship parts. Yeah, but that's okay because I can find out right now uh yep looks like this is kit bashable with the original kelvin timeline constitution uh so you can do either or and you can change the saucer the neck the pylons the nacelles so we can do connie beta looks like there's a little bug with this right now um in the bussard collectors oh nope never mind that's just a visual bug for a second there um ah. so yeah but you can see you can get all of those options there <laughs> and uh to the the comments of oh nice you put a grab well enhancer on a non-science vessel it does have a lieutenant commander universal seat so yeah you can still do some somewhat flexible things with that all right well let's let's take this lovely ship over to our gala and uh uh and get um uh, get show off some of these cool new powers. <laughs> Heterochromia uh, Bussards would have been amazing. You're right. <laughs> yeah, as befits a, a vessel that is really built to 
the last and to fight against um, uh, the toughest enemies that the Federation runs into in the Kelvin timeline. This is a 5-3 ship. Huzzah. I, I did not show off the buff seating. Uh, Jesse mentioned some of it. I will do that as soon as we load into Argala here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, Michael Jarvis Wood, I don't know for sure that this doesn't kit bash with the Connie refit. This character may not have the Connie refit unlocked. Uh, so I, I don't have a surefire answer to that. But I can ask. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, it does kit bash with the Connie refit. Con Thomas is watching this stream, and <laughs> let me know before I can even message him. All <laughs> right, where's our brand new console? Is it this one? No. Is it this one? No, I think I recognize that. No, it's this one. Is it? Yeah. All right, let's get to work. I have zero intention of uh, uh, of firing any weapons at these people. I'm just going to fly into them and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Thomas, it's Bizarre. okay if you read chat. You're not on the stream. <laughs> so yeah, as we circle around this guy, did a bunch of damage. I should have done that as we were closer. Uh, of course, it. in Argala, you, you often wind up fighting against those carriers that the Kazon use, and the PPAOE just vaporizes fighters, so yeah. really good for that sort of thing. Yeah, it's much better for smaller things than it is for big cruisers, but we're still doing some pretty good damage just zip zipping around this guy. I really just love how the effect reminds me of, of those little uh, plasma thread lamps that you could get at, at Science Museum novelty gift stores. <laughs> yes, exactly. Or as Augie put it, Kelvin Timeline Christmas Globe. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, Armor can. Uh, we just couldn't get the rights to sabotage. Uh, but you can turn it on on your own Spotify and play it whenever you use this power. Uh, this for right is very now, true. For right now, I'll fill in on it. Hold on. Can't stand it. I know you planned it. I'm going to set straight this water gate. There you go. I you assume that was what rocking you wanted. While I'm in here. How's your crystal ball? Well, it's so, so crystal, crystal clear. clear. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. I was going to show you guys the seats. I'll do that now. <laughs> All right. So we've got Lieutenant Commander Universal. Lieutenant Universal. Shut up. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander <laughs> Tactical Pilot. Lieutenant Commander Engineering Intelligence. And Ensign Science. So there you go. Uh, it does also kit bash with the Connie refit style. Um, it was confirmed by uh, art director Thomas Maroney just moments ago. Alright, so what's the difference between this one and the command and intel variants? Well, this is a completely new ship. Um, so it's got a new console, it's got new traits, new seating. Uh, so everything? Right, and uh, although it's Intel primary uh, and pilot secondary, it's got those two universal seats, one lieutenant commander, one lieutenant, so you've got a good deal of flexibility in how you want to build it. With the 5-3 weapon layout, um, you are pretty well positioned to have heavy forward firepower, presumably using your Kelvin phasers, but whatever you really like. But it really is made for favor phasers with the PBAOE console giving a flat phaser damage bonus. Um of course, it has the cruiser command array, so you get all four of the, the cruiser uh, auras. Um, and the cruiser starship mastery package, which gives it a lot more survivability, which, given what we saw of the Connies in the <laughs> in Star Trek movies, Beyond. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they can take a lot of punishment. Until they very suddenly can't. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, there's a cloak on this ship. Uh, Jesse, do you know if that's a weird thing with this build, or if that's actually on the ship? Uh, it's because it's Intel primary. Okay, so it does have a cloak. Yep. Nice. Uh, the answer for why are we releasing this ship now is because you guys asked for it. Uh, I don't know if you saw the hype in chat when it first popped up, but the uh, uh, while well, the movie may be... Eight years old. Oh God, I'm Whoa. old. Uh, the uh, um, people really wanted this variation of the Kelvin and uh, or the Connie, and uh, you know everyone loves more Connies. So it's true. 
Connie's are the popular design out there. Um, yeah, um, and that's really kind of how the the cadence goes. We you know just got a new season of Discovery starting, and we're in between seasons of Strange New Worlds. Uh, so this was a perfect time to say, oh hey, there's a variant from the Kelvin universe that we haven't done, and. Thomas is fond of saying, eventually we will get every ship that appears in a show or movie into the game. I mean, Al, uh, Al's big thing was, we will get everything that ever appears in Star Trek into our game at right? some point. <laughs> Even the Jaeger? Yes, especially the Jaeger. Especially the Jaeger. And um, the uh, uh, new season of Discovery, of course, has some new ships in it. So now we have somewhere to go again. But Yay! in the meantime, had to have something for you all. Yeah. And... You know, this is very exciting. I will, I will say, there was another ship um, that we, are, there is another ship that we are working on that we're very excited about, but um, we <laughs> had to move some things around because uh, that ship didn't actually end up getting revealed when we thought it would. Uh, so um, I don't think this replaced that ship, but there has been a little bit of hilarious scrambling behind the scenes. There's been some tap dancing and shuffling, yes. yes. <laughs> oh yeah! Wow, it just decimated that fighter. I cannot Just a wait little to... off the top. Chop, chop, chop. <laughs> I can't wait to take this into uh, uh, into like a one of the um, victorious life missions with all the Herc flying around. Right, the swarm TFO. Yeah. Yeah, bizarre. <laughs> bizarre indeed. Uh, we're <laughs> we're uh, essentially becoming a metaverse like Fortnite, uh, says Rachel Oldman. That is uh, actually 100% correct, and that was always the goal. Well, maybe not always the goal, but it's been the goal for the last couple of years. Just make it a Star right. Trek theme park where you can have the Star Trek dream that you dream. The, yeah, this is a really important thing to understand about the game's design ideals, too. Like, So I'm glad you, you mentioned that, Kale, um, because... Star Trek means a lot of things to different people. I grew up watching reruns of the original series with my dad. I have friends and family who got into Star Trek from Next Gen or DS9. There's a whole new generation that are learning about Star Trek from Lower Decks and Strange New Worlds and Discovery. Everyone loves different things about the show. Jesse, you missed a oh. perfect opportunity to say a whole Next Generation. I'm so disappointed uh, in you. You're a writer. Uh, How could you do this? Well, because I'm talking, <laughs> not writing. <laughs> Uh, the uh, so the the Star Trek Online game is a theme park where you get to experience each of these different shows and movies. Uh, sometimes we mash them up, other times we try to build things that are sort of a, a love letter to, to parts of that franchise. Kind of hate to use that phrase because I think it gets overused in the wrong way too. But yeah, uh, the the idea you get the idea. Like when we do our episodes with Voyager, where you're dealing with Neelix and the Doctor and Seven of Nine, we want people who really loved Voyager and grew up enjoying those episodes to feel like they get to be part of the Voyager experience. And there's all the characters that they they remember. Yep. Same thing for DS9, TNG, original series, Discovery, everything. So Star Trek Online is a, a little bit of all of these for everyone because infinite diversity and infinite combinations, right? The biggest example of this is the fact that we have uh, Jerry Ryan playing two different versions of Seven of Nine in the game. Right. Uh, because we wanted people who really wanted to meet Voyager Seven of Nine to still get that experience, while people who were uh, now deeply in love with Picard Seven of Nine to get that experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, this, yes, Enver, this hits PC this Thursday. Again, this is part of an Infinity pack promo, so you can get Infinity R&D or Infinity Duty Officer packs. Uh, Silver Firestorm wants to know if the ship can use DHCs? I, my brain Dual not... Heavy Cannons. Ah, uh, this yes. is a strict cruiser, so I don't believe that it can, but I won't swear to that because I didn't do that implementation. I can but, swear um, to that. Just a moment. I just have to look mm -hmm. at the stats here because it always says... Looking device. I do not see the usual can equip dual heavy cannons that is there when right. it can. So I'm going to say no, it can't. So probably not a DHC guy, but you might be using, you know, narrow beam, narrow band beam arrays, narrow arc beam arrays or something uh, instead. Um, cruisers typically you run beams is the, the default build. Obviously, I'm not talking about you high performance people who can take a ship and, and make it sing with anything. But, uh, 
the yeah. the expected gameplay is like a, a raw cruiser is mostly supposed to be do beam broadsides or fire at wills. Nice. Um, yeah, so it can only use dual cannons, spelled D U E L. <laughs> Trekkie says yes. <laughs> we will we will uh, we will throw down a glove and have cannons at dawn. Uh, uh, let's see. <laughs> um, there was a question I wanted to answer, and oh no. Yes, Augie, uh, you are, in fact, the Pavarotti of builds. <laughs> to make anything sing. Alright, there, there was a question I wanted to answer, but I didn't... I, I lost it for some reason, so... Um, oh, no. But I'm loving to see all you people post in chat when you got into Star Trek. A lot of TNGers and a lot of TOSers in our mix, which uh, honestly tracks with what we know about our audience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, Trexpert wants to know if you're going to uh, uh, binge watch Fallout this weekend, Jesse. Probably. I'm I'm very excited. It looks fun. I mean, it's a weird time for me to be living in. The the little game that I worked on back in '97, just as a tiny, tiny piece of the team, is suddenly a worldwide phenomenon. What? When did this happen? <laughs> it, I don't think it's that sudden. It's been for like 20 years now, but yeah. Yes, okay, admittedly, I I had my first exposure to that moment was when I saw an ad for Fallout 4 on a city bus in L.A., and I was like, uh, wait. What? <laughs> this is... Mm. I, I am a stranger <laughs> in a strange land. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I started watching... Uh, sorry, Trekkie STO said uh, uh, that he was enjoying the ARC se animated series, and I started watching that and forgot I had started watching it. ADD is a wonderful thing. <laughs> oh, well, get back to that. Yeah. Uh, so I see a couple of people asking about Kelvin Omni Beams. Um, I would have to ask and check into if we have any plans to do that. I don't know of any off the top of my head. It's not impossible, but it's something I would have to ask about. But yeah, I have a feeling it's not with this ship. Probably not coming with this ship. No. Yeah. But by probably, I mean not coming with this ship. <laughs> um. Uh. Talk. Uh. A two Cade, I believe we have some Romulan and or Klingon ships coming up, but let me let me take a look at the ship release schedule so I can tell you one way or another. While you're looking that up, Zarek yeah. says, "Do non-Fed ships still make no money?" Um, now that cross faction flying is a thing, this isn't as big of a problem as it once was. You know, we laughingly would say that there were some Klingon ships that we sold tens of, tens yeah. of them. Um, and uh, now that anyone can fly it, there's a little more demand, but a little. Like, making a Klingon ship, even though feds can fly it, just isn't as, uh, there isn't as much demand as there is for something like yeah. the Kelvin A. Uh, that's, that's a simple reality of it. So how much effort can we put into making these things if the demand isn't there to sustain it? Yeah. That we being still said, want to do we it. are doing, as you guys already know, we are doing the Dyson bundle. It's coming very soon. And I have seen right. the Klingon and Romulan ships from those that bundle. And they do <laughs> exist. It's real. <laughs> um, yeah. They it's, are pretty uh, amazing. Those are, those, um, those are my noises of extreme excitement. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And there's, there's an interesting twist on that that's coming too. But uh, we don't talk about upcoming content. So I'm just no. going to leave it at that. Uh, but. Uh, Part of yeah, me wants to just you... say F it and pull up the pictures of those ships from my email. I'll consider it. <laughs> consider it. Consider it. They we are can beautiful. Tease whatever we like, want. It's true. Um, ultimate power. Ultimate used... power. Irresponsibly. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so so we do occasionally want to get the Romulan, the Dominion, the Klingons, something here and there. But the reality is like large amounts of the player base are interested in flying Federation ships. So if we see a new ship in Discovery or Strange New Worlds, people want to use that, and we want to put that in the game. So we spend I, a lot of energy there. You know, the thing is uh, that, um, you know, a lot of things like PvP in our game is kind of a snake eating its own tail. You know, people weren't interested, so we didn't do it. So people weren't interested, so we didn't do it. Uh, with this one, it just turns out just shockingly most people want to play federation in their star trek uh uh fantasies mm -hmm. uh and i say shockingly uh in a uh, a sort of um what's the word uh 
a sort of a, a sarcastic way because I mean they're, all the shows have been about mm-hmm. Federation. All the major characters that everyone loves have been mostly in the Federation. I wasn't gonna say I was gonna say all of them, but you know Odo and stuff mm-hmm. uh, and Kira. But um, but you know like the majority of these shows are about the Federation and that's why most people want to be a part of that world. Um, I'm a weirdo who loves Klingons more, but you know, yeah, I'm a fan of Romulan designs myself, but, uh, uh, you know, like someone said in the, the stream there, um, Star Trek shows have principally been about the Federation and about characters in Starfleet interacting with other members of the Federation and occasionally crossing paths with these other alien species. So we see Klingons and Romulans from time to time. But to date, we haven't had a show that's just the Klingon show or something like that. And we if absolutely happens, should give it know, to me. In the original Paramount. Klingon. Can you imagine doing a Klingon show? But doing it like they did the the movie Prey, so oh the God, default yes. of the show is just everything's in Klingon. They're doing and... that. I mean, basically, they're doing that right now with Shogun. I was expecting them to transform it to, to mm-hmm. you know just give up and start doing English halfway through. And no, the show has been entirely in Japanese except for a few scenes, and it makes me yeah. very happy. There's been a little bit of that in Discovery season one, but yeah, doing a, a show that is like this is all about Klingons and everything and is in doing Klingon. In Klingon. Oh, yeah. man, that would be awesome. That would be pretty dope. Yeah. Um, but, I, think, uh, uh, yeah. I think they should base the entire show off of my Star Trek Online character, because I have that <laughs> power. <laughs> right? All right. Well, um, we are nearing the end here, um, but I do want to show you guys some things, because they make me happy. Uh, so we'll start with this. Best reason. Hmm, very pretty. Okay, that goes away now. And then we'll show this. Okay, then we'll hide it again. (laughs) So those are some ideas of what you might be seeing coming up in said Dyson bundle, if you couldn't figure out that that's what I was doing. Um, But... Uh, we have talked this ship up and down. Um, I am going to look for us for someone for us to raid. Um, in the meantime, uh, Jesse, tell us something you hope will be in the Fallout series that you created. <laughs> like um, something you created that you hope will be in the Fallout series. Uh, I really hope that... So the, the, the show, apparently, a bunch of it is taking place in and around L.A., and there's a particular scene where I was looking at the backgrounds no. of the scene and I went, wait a minute, is that supposed to be junk town? And so I'm kind of hoping that that's what it is, that we get into a scene and the characters are in junk town circa 2280 or whenever they set it. I think it's probably later than 2280. I forget because it's going to be after the Battle of Hoover Dam. Uh, so that would be hilarious to actually see junk town in the show. All right, well, Endeavor is doing a talk show about our show right now, so I think it would be hilarious oh, to, uh, to raid him. Uh, so, incoming, Endeavor. Uh, and we did not I didn't show the Fed Dyson ship because I don't have a picture of that right now. But, um, uh, uh, but yeah. Um, and somebody else said, "Do you did, did Kel ever answer about Klingon or Federation ships? What did I just show you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get started on this raid. Um... Did that work? I don't see a raid thing. Okay, that's not the right one. Raid on hold. Raid on hold. I need. I, apparently, okay. I'm spelling something wrong in Endeavor's name. Does it, it is Twitch? Okay, what in the Billy Blue? Gosh darnity dog. Uh, okay we're gonna go back to twitch and find this again twitch has made this harder and that annoys me that is annoying you'd think they'd want it to be smooth and seamless so people can go from stream to stream to stream right okay twitch what you doing there we go okay 
So we're getting ready to raid on there, Facebook and uh, Twitter, or Facebook and YouTube. It was great to chat with everybody. And Jesse, before we, we leave, I just want to say thank you so much for everything you've done for this game over the years. I know that everybody really appreciates you and your font of knowledge and kindness that you've brought on. Uh, mm. All right. Well. Fantastic. Thank we, you, too. <laughs> you're welcome. All right. Well, folks, we will see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.